I want to share with you four things that you can do to become better at reacting and dealing with life's trials. Bismillah. Number one is your salah, your five daily prayers. We often underestimate the sheer power of our salawats. Once Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said, Ya Rasulullah, what was the most difficult time in your life? And he said it was the time I went to Ta'if. And we all know that after two, over two years of boycott where the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions were eating leaves, his wife died from malnutrition and his uncle. What did the Prophet Sallallahu do? He went to Ta'if and he went walking. And when he got there and he told them about the message of Islam with this hope that they would accept the message since Quraysh was rejecting it, he was ridiculed. And they actually had their children throw stones and pelt the Prophet ﷺ until his feet were bleeding. So Aisha, when she asked the Prophet ﷺ, what was the most difficult time of your life? The Prophet ﷺ said, Ta'if. But do you know in the seerah what happened right after Ta'if? Isra and Mi'raj. And the Prophet ﷺ and all of us, his ummah, were gifted the five daily prayers. These prayers are a means of building your emotional and spiritual resilience for life's tests. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Istainu bisabri wa salah. Seek help. Seek that power in your prayer because your salah will give you the ability to withstand life's tests, these inevitable tests that you and I will face. Hudayfa radiallahu anha, who was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu he said, that every time the Prophet ﷺ faced difficulty, the first thing that he would do was he would stand in prayer. I'm going to start learning what I'm saying. What does it mean when I say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawm al-Din, Subhan Rabbil Azim, Sami' Allah, Liman Hamida. Learn the words that you're saying in your salah so that your salah can have that benefit, insha'Allah. Number two, dua. We often underestimate as well the power of our dua. Um Salama radiallahu anha said that her husband Abu Salama radiallahu anhu one day came to her and said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught me something amazing. And so she said, what was it? And he said, the Prophet ﷺ told me that there's no believer who goes through hardship, who is tested or tried, and says, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, Allahumma ajirni fi musibati wa khlifli khayran minha, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them for their trial and compensates them with something better. Now this is where the story gets interesting. Um Salama radiallahu anha says, and when Abu Salama died, her husband that she loved so much, she says about him he was the best husband ever. When he died, she said, I remembered this saying. I remembered this hadith and I tried to get myself to say it and I said it all except for the last portion. Oh Allah, compensate me with something better. She said when I got up to that portion, I thought to myself, no one is better than Abu Salama. He was the best husband ever, but she trusted the Prophet Sallallahu and she believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his power to give her something better. So she said, I said it. And do you want to know what happened right after her idda was over? The best of creation, 
the Prophet وسلم, asked for her hand in marriage and married her. And she gained one of the greatest honors that anyone can ever gain in this life. And she became a mother of the believers. Don't underestimate the power of your dua, especially in hardship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءِ is there anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that answers dua and that removes hardships and difficulties? When you raise your hands to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want you to remember something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said. He said that Allah is hayyun kareem. Allah is shy and generous. That when any one of us goes like this and makes dua, that Allah does not give them what they're asking for. So make dua to Allah, especially in times of difficulty. And you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for you. And make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you well-being. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually said, make dua for afia, for well-being. And he also said, لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو. Don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for trials. Don't ask him to be put in difficulty. Ask him for afia. And actually, every morning and every evening, he would make a dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah fi dunya wal-akhira. He would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for well-being in this dunya and the akhira. And make dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the ability to be patient when you are tested. Number three, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease. You know, there's a very famous narration, which is a part of the 40 uh, hadith of Imam Nawawi. It's a long narration that I really wish I had the time to go over where the Prophet Sallallahu is riding with Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and he gives the Ibn Abbas some beautiful advice. One of the parts of this advice is, تعرف إلى الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة Recognize and acknowledge and remember Allah in good times, in times of ease and prosperity, and Allah will remember you in times of difficulty and adversity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this in the Quran. He tells us the story of his Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. Prophet Yunus alayhi salam was in a very difficult situation. He found himself in the belly of a whale, in the middle of, an, of the night, in the middle of the ocean. And while he was in the belly of the whale, he remembered Allah and he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al By the way, for those of you who want the du'as that I'm talking about today, don't worry. For your convenience, I've made a little sheet that you can download from my website, which is just dunyashuaib.com. Um, with all the du'as and the references, inshallah. So don't worry about getting the du'as. I know I'm saying them really quickly. So Yunus alayhi salam said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al And the mufassirun have said that when he said that, the angels actually said, Ya Allah, we hear a voice that's very familiar, but it sounds so far away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, This is the voice of my servant Yunus. And Allah tells us in the Quran that because he said that, Allah got him out of the belly of the whale. But then Allah says something very interesting. Allah said, if he wasn't from the people who remembered me often, I would have left him in the belly of the whale until the day of judgment. So remember Allah in times of ease and Allah will remember you in times of difficulties. Once a man came to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. Abu Darda was a great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said, "Advise me." And Abu Darda said, "Remember Allah when you're happy, and Allah rem will remember you when you're in difficulty." 
And then he said, make dua when you're in times of ease and Allah will answer your du'as in times of difficulty. Number four, last but not least, keep the end in mind. It's very interesting how the Prophet ﷺ really taught the companions to reframe the way they look at challenges and difficulties over his 23-year period as a Prophet ﷺ. One Sahabi says that he visited the Prophet ﷺ while the Prophet ﷺ was in his last illness. And he saw the Prophet ﷺ and he sat next to him. And the Sahabi says, I was clothed and the Prophet ﷺ was also clothed. And when my thigh touched his body, his body was so hot I had to move away. Imagine how hot the Prophet ﷺ must have been. So this Sahabi actually says, Ya Rasulullah, you have such a high fever. And the Prophet ﷺ responded and said, My fever is like two of a normal person's fever. And I want you to really pay attention. It's very amazing what the Sahabi who responded to the Prophet. ﷺ. Do you know what he said? He didn't say, oh, poor you. Oh, Ya Rasulullah, that's so sad. No, listen to what he said. He said, Ya Rasulullah, is it because you will get double the reward? <laughs> Look at how the Sahaba learned to look at challenges. He said, Ya Rasulullah, is it because you will get double the reward? And the Prophet wasallam said, yes. This is the mindset of the believer. When the Prophet wasallam said, Ajaban ni amr al-mu'min, amazing is the affair of the believer. This is the mindset of the believer where they see goodness in everything. The Prophet ﷺ said yes. And then he said, no Muslim is ever afflicted with any harm or any discomfort or any pain, even if it was so small, like the prick of a thorn, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate their sins, like a tree sheds its leaves. Isn't it amazing how the Prophet ﷺ thought about you and I even during his last days? He thought, how can I change the mindset of those who will come later when they experience difficulty and when they face hardship? How will I give my ummah something that they can use to get through this hard life? And the Prophet ﷺ did it right then and there. He said to reframe and remember the end goal. Remember that your sins are being washed away. Now I wanted to conclude with something that is one of the greatest sources of comfort for me. And it's two words I want you to remember. And the two words are one dip. The Prophet ﷺ said that on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the person who experienced the most difficulty in this life, who lived the worst life. And Allah will take that person and dip them into Jannah one dip and take them out and ask them, have you ever seen any difficulty? Have you ever experienced any hardship? And that person will say, by Allah, I've never experienced difficulty or hardship. If that's what one dip in Jannah will do, imagine what eternity in Jannah will be like. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same way that He gathered us here, that He gathers us in the highest level of Jannah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to be patient when He tests us and to give us afiyah in this dunya and the akhirah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because only He knows what each and every one of us is going through, that He exchanges all of our sadness for happiness and all of our fear and our anxiety for serenity and tranquility. 
اللهم آمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته